If you plan on running your show for a number of weeks as opposed to a one-time show, you are going to need some sort of enclosure for your projector. There are some options out there for purchasing professionally manufactured outdoor rated projector housings. These are quite expensive and not all of them have sufficient ventilation and don't come with a tripod or mount. Then there is the DIY route. Digital Pressworks has a guide with a list of materials and instructions. But if you would rather design your own solution, these are your main considerations. We've already talked about the importance of your projector not moving once everything is mapped. So this enclosure and mount needs to be stable and fixed, but perhaps with some latitude for adjustment if the ground moves or settles. Incorporating a projector mount or bracket in your design gives you the ability to adjust, but also to lock off a fixed position. One feature of short throw projectors is that they often have some lens shift, which means they project an image that is offset upwards rather than perpendicular to the unit. What this means is that you usually need to tilt them forward to some extent to get coverage on the areas of the house that are at the same level as the projector. A projector mount or bracket would help you do this, but alternatively you could use an adjustable laptop stand inside the enclosure. Depending on where you live, the enclosure might be at risk of rain, so it needs to be weatherproof to some extent. You can buy some kind of plastic box or container that will give you a good starting point for your enclosure. Things like a plastic tote or cooler. Or you could make your box out of wood. If you are using wood, make sure to seal all the gaps and use a sealant on the wood to resist the elements. Also use screws and other fixtures and fittings that are for outdoor use so they don't rust. Beyond regular wood sealant, tough protective coating like the stuff you use on a truck bed can give you even more protection. If you're cutting your enclosure and running cables into it, you might want to consider using cable glands to keep the enclosure sealed and free of moisture. You will also need a hole for your projector's light beam, which will be covered with some kind of transparent material to let the light through. You might be tempted to use a cheap material like plexiglass, but be aware that this material interferes with the light beam and often reduces brightness. From looking at home theater forums, there are many recommendations for home theater glass, also sometimes called projector porthole or port glass, or water white glass. These products are a lot more expensive, but they are anti-reflective and have high light transmission, so the glass barely impacts the light passing through it. If you plan to bring your projector inside each night and during bad weather, then you want to be able to do this as efficiently as possible while still being able to return it to its exact mapped position each night. You could do this using markers, fixings, or just adjusting by eye each night. If you are going to move the whole enclosure every evening, you might benefit from fitting it with wheels or handles for lifting and carrying it. Alternatively, you can leave the enclosure in place and just remove the projector. If you put some signage on your enclosure to let thieves know you remove the projector each night, there is less chance of them destroying all your hard work only to find out there's nothing inside. Projectors, especially short throws, are at risk of overheating if they don't have good airflow around their fans. If this happens, they will turn off and potentially sustain damage. So your enclosure needs good ventilation and to be large enough so air can circulate around the unit. 18 inches by 24 inches by 8 inches is generally large enough to provide good air circulation. You should consider having at least three enclosure vents that won't let in rain or bugs, one as an inlet and two as outlets, ideally corresponding to where the projector's fans are located. And although projectors are more intolerant to high temperatures, they also don't want to be too cold. A projector will have a range of operating temperatures in its spec sheet, which you want to keep within. Some more sophisticated enclosure builds incorporate temperature monitors which can intelligently switch on heating devices like heated reptile mats or cooling systems like computer fans. To make their enclosures less of an eyesore, some people disguise them as trees, stumps, boulders, tombstones and other creative things. Even if you don't want to give it a theatrical disguise, at least painting it black will help it blend into the yard and not glow with the light of the projector inside. As for mounting your enclosure, I've seen some that aren't mounted at all and just sit on the ground. If you need a bit of height, you could mount it on a pole fixed in concrete or anchored into the lawn. You could investigate projector or laptop stands. You could 
also consider a heavy duty camera tripod or a construction tripod. What are your options if you're concerned about security? You could stay with your projector or at least bring it in each night. For while it's unattended, you want to make it as hard as possible for thieves to quickly access the projector. So you want every part of your enclosure to be secure. People use ground anchors and bike locks for securing mounts and enclosures to the ground. Then any access to the projector inside the enclosure would ideally be fitted with a lock. You can then layer on other forms of security like alarms and motion sensitive security cameras and lights. If this video helped you, say thanks by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next video.